Vault 7, CIA hacking tools revealed, year zero, press release, today, Tuesday, 7 March 2017, WikiLeaks begins its new series of leaks on the CIA Central Intelligence Agency, codenamed Vault 7 by WikiLeaks, it is the largest ever publication of confidential documents on the agency. The first vault of the series, Year Zero, comprises 8,761 documents and files from an isolated, highly secure network situated inside the CIA's Center for Cyber Intelligence in Langley, Virginia. It follows an introductory disclosure last month of CIA targeting French political parties and candidates in the lead up to the 2012 presidential elections. Recently, the CIA lost control of the majority of its hacking arsenal, including malware, viruses, trojans, weaponized zero-day exploits, malware remote control systems, and associated documentation. This extraordinary collection, which amounts to more than several hundred million lines of code, gives its possessor the entire hacking capability capacity of the CIA. The archive appears to have been circulated among former U.S. government hackers and contractors in an unauthorized manner, one of whom has provided WikiLeaks with portions of the archive. Year Zero introduces the scope of direction of the CIA's global covert hacking program, its malware arsenal, and dozens of zero-day weaponized exploits against the wide range of U.S. and European companies products, including Apple's iPhone, Google's Android, and Microsoft Windows and even Samsung TVs, which are turned into covert microphones. Since 2001, the CIA has gained political and budgetary prominence over the U.S. National Security Agency, NSA. The CIA found itself building not just its now infamous drone fleet, but a very different type of covert, global-spanning force its own substantial fleet of hackers. The agency's hacking division freed it from having to disclose its often controversial operations to the NSA, its primary bureaucratic rival, in order to draw on the NSA's hacking capacities. In the end of 2016, the CIA's hacking division, which formally falls under the agency's Center, Center for Cyber Intelligence, CCI, have over 5,000 registered users and have produced more than a thousand hacking systems, trojans, viruses, and other weaponized malware. Such is the scale of the CIA's undertaking that by 2016, its hackers had utilized more code than that used to run Facebook. The CIA had created, in effect, its own NSA with even less accountability and without publicly answering the question as to whether such a massive budgetary spent on duplicating the capacities of a rival agency could be justified. In a statement to WikiLeaks, the source details policy questions that they say urgently need to be debated in public, including whether the CIA's hacking capabilities exceed its mandated powers and the problem of public oversight of the agency. The source wishes to initiate a public debate about the security, creation, use, proliferation, and democratic control of cyber weapons. Once a single cyber weapon is loose, it can spread around the world in seconds to be used by rival states, cyber mafia, and teenage hackers alike. Julian Assange, WikiLeaks director, stated that there is extreme proliferation risk in the development of cyber weapons, comparisons can be drawn between uncontrolled proliferation of such weapons, which results from the inability to contain them, combined with their high market value and the global arms trade. But the significance of Year Zero goes well beyond the choice between cyber war and cyber peace. The disclosure is also exceptional from a political, legal, and forensic perspective. WikiLeaks has carefully reviewed the Year Zero disclosure and published substantive CIA documentation while avoiding the distribution of armed
of cyber weapons until a consensus emerges on the technical and political nature of the CIA's program and how such weapons should analyze, disarm, and publish. WikiLeaks has also decided to redact and anonymize some identifying information in year zero for in-depth analysis. These redactions include tens of thousands of CIA targets and attack machines throughout Latin America, Europe, and the United States. While we are aware of the imperfect results of any approach chosen, we remain committed to our publishing model and note that the quantity of published pages in Vault 7 Part 1, Year Zero, already eclipses the total number of pages published over the first three years of Edward Snowden's NSA leaks. Analysis CIA malware targets iPhone, Android, smart TVs. CIA malware and hacking tools are built by EDG, Engineering Development Pro Group, a software development group within CCI, Center for Cyber Intelligence, a department belonging to the CIA's DDI, Directorate for Digital Innovation. The DDI is one of the five major directors of the CIA. See this organization chart of the CIA for more details. The EDG is responsible for the development, testing, and operational support of all backdoor exploits, malicious payloads, trojans, viruses, and any other kind of malware used by the CIA in its covert operations worldwide. The increasing sophistication of surveillance techniques has drawn comparison with George Orwell's 1984, but Weeping Angel, developed by the CIA's embedded devices, branch EDP, which infests smart TVs, transforming them into covert microphones, is surely its most emblematic realization. The attack against Samsung smart TVs was developed in cooperation with the United Kingdom's MI5 BTSS. After infestation, Weeping Angel places the target TV in a fake off mode so that the owner falsely believes the TV is off when it is on. In fake off mode, the TV operates as a bug, recording conversations in the room and sending them over the internet to a covert CIA server. As of October 2014, the CIA was also looking at infecting the vehicle control systems used by modern cars and trucks. The purpose of such controls is not specific, but it would permit the CIA to engage in nearly undetectable assassinations. The CIA's mobile device, branch MDB, developed numerous attacks to remotely hack and control popular smartphones. Infected phones can be instructed to send the CIA the user's geolocation, audio and text communication, as well as covertly activate, activate the phone's camera and microphone. Despite iPhone's minority share, 14.5% of the global mar smartphone market in 2016, a specialized unit in the CIA's mobile development branch produced malware to invest, control, and exfiltrate data from iPhones and other Apple products running iOS, such as iPads. CIA's arsenal includes numerous local and remote zero-day development developed by CIA or obtained from GCHQ, NSA, FBI, or purchased for cyber arms contractors such as Bait Shop. The disproportionate focus on iOS may be explained by the popularity of iPhone among social, political, diplomatic, and business elites. A similar unit targets Google's Android, which is used to run the majority of the world's smartphones, 85%, including Samsung, HTC, and Sony. 1.15 billion Android-powered phones were sold last year. Year Zero shows that, uh, that as of 2016, the CIA had 24 weaponized Android Zero Days, which it has developed itself and obtained from GCHQ, NSA, and cyber arms contractors. The 
Police techniques permit the CIA to bypass the encryption of WhatsApp, Signal, Telegram, Weibo, Confide, and Cloakman by hacking the smartphones that they run on and collecting audio and message trans traffic before encryption is applied. The CIA malware targets Windows, OS X, Linux, routers. The CIA also runs a very substantial effort to infect and control Microsoft Windows users with its malware. This includes multiple local and remote weaponized zero-day air gap jumping viruses such as Hammer Drill, which infects software distributed on CD DVDs, in infectors for remote removable media such as USBs, systems to hide data in images or in covert disk areas, brutal kangaroo, and to keep its malware infestation going. Many of these infections efforts are pulled together by the CIA's automated implant branch, AIP, which has developed several attack systems for automated infestation and control of CIA malware, such as Assassin and Medusa. Attacks against internet infrastructures and web servers are developed by the CIA's network devices branch, NDP. The CIA has developed automated multi-platform malware attack and control systems covering Windows, Mac, OS X, Solaris, Linux, and more, such as EDB's Hive and the related code, Cutthroat and Swindle tools, which are described in the examples section below. CIA Hoarder Vulnerabilities Zero Days in the wake of Edward Snowden's leaked leaks about the NSA, the U.S. technology industry secured a commitment from the Obama administration that the executive would disclose on any ongoing basis rather than hoard serious vulnerabilities, exploits, bugs, or zero days to Apple, Google, Microsoft, and other U.S.-based manufacturers. Serious vulnerabilities not disclosed to the manufacturers places huge swaths of the population in critical infrastructure at risk to foreign intelligence or cyber criminals who independently discover or hear rumors of the vulnerability. If the CIA can discover such vulnerabilities, so can others. The U.S. government's commitment to the vulnerabilities equities process came after significant lobbying by U.S. technology companies who risk losing their share of the global market over real and perceived hidden vulnerabilities. The government stated that it would disclose all pervasive vulnerabilities discovered after 2010 on an ongoing basis. Year Zero documents show that the CIA breached the Obama administration's commitments. Many of the vulnerabilities used in the CIA's cyber arsenal are pervasive and some may already have been found by rival intelligence agencies or cyber criminals. As an example, specific CIA malware revealed in year zero is able to penetrate, invest, and control both the Android phone and iPhone software that runs or has run presidential tweet Twitter accounts. The CIA attacks this software by using undisclosed security vulnerabilities, zero days possessed by the CIA. But if the CIA can hack these phones, then so can everyone else who has obtained or discovered the vulnerability. As long as the CIA keeps these vulnerabilities concealed from Apple and Google who make the phones, they will not be fixed and the phones will remain hackable. The same vulnerabilities exist for the population at large, including the U.S. Cabinet, Congress, top CEOs, system administrators, security officials, and engineers. By hiding the security flaws from manufacturers like Apple and Google, the CIA ensures that it can hack everyone at the expense of leaving everyone hackable. Cyber warfare programs are a serious proliferation risk. Cyber weapons are not possible to keep under effective control. While nuclear proliferation has been restrained by the enormous
was cost and visible infrastructure involved in assembling enough fissile material to produce a critical nuclear mass. Cyber weapons, once developed, are very hard to retain. Cyber weapons are in fact just computer programs which can be pirated like any other. Since they are entirely comprised of information, they can be copied quickly with no marginal cost. Securing such weapons is particularly difficult since the same people who developed and used them have the skills to exfiltrate copies without leaving traces, sometimes by using the very same weapons against the organizations that contain them. There are substantial price incentives for government hackers and consultants to obtain copies since there is a global vulnerability market that will pay hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars for copies of such weapons. Similarly, contractors and companies who obtain such weapons sometimes use them for their own purposes, obtaining advantage over their competitors in selling hacking services. Over the last three years, the United States intelligence sector, which consists of government agencies such as the CIA and NSA, and their contractors such as Booz Allen Hamilton, has been subject to unprecedented series of data exfiltrations by its own workers. A number of intelligence communities, community members not yet publicly named, have been arrested or subject to federal crime investigations in separate incidents. Most visibly, on February 8, 2017, a U.S. federal grand jury, federal grand jury indicted Harold T. Martin III with 20 counts of mishandling classified information. The Department of Justice alleged that it seized some 50,000 gigabytes of information from Harold T. Martin III that had that he had obtained from classified programs at NSA and CIA, including the source code for numerous hacking tools. Once a single cyber weapon is loose, it can spread around the world in seconds to be used by peer states, cyber mafia, and teenage hackers alike. U.S. consulate in Frankfurt is a covert CIA hacker base. In addition to its operations in Langley, Virginia, the CIA also uses the U.S. consulate in Frankfurt as a covert base for its hacker cover hackers covering Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. The CIA hackers operating out of Frankfurt consulate, Center for Cyber Intelligence Europe, or CCIE, are given diplomatic blank passports and State Department cover. The instructions for Incoming CIA hackers make Germany's counterintelligence efforts appear inconsequential. Breeze through German con customs because you have your cover for action story down pat and all they did was stamp your passport. Your cover story for this trip. Question. Why are you here? Answer. Support technical consultation at the consulate. Two earlier WikiLeaks publications give further details on CIA approaches to customs and secondary screening procedures. Once in Frankfurt, CIA hackers can travel without further border checks to the 25 European countries that are part of the Schengen open border area, including France, Italy, and Switzerland. A number of the CIA's electronic attack methods are designed for physical proximity. These attack methods are all are able to penetrate high security networks that are disconnected from the internet, such as police record database. In these cases, a CIA officer, agent, or allied intelligence officer acting under instruction physically infiltrates the targeted workplace. The attacker is provided with a USB containing malware developed for the CIA for this purpose, which is inserted into the targeted computer. The attacker then infests and exfiltrates data to removable media. For example, the CIA attack center system, fine dining, 
provides 24 decoy applications for CIA spies to use. To witnesses, the spy appears to be running a program showing videos, example VLC, presenting slides, Peresi, playing a computer green, breakout 2, 2048, or even running a fake virus scanner, Kaspersky, McAfee, Sophos. But while the decoy application is on the screen, the underlying system is automatically infected and ransacked. How the CIA dramatically increases proliferation risks in what is surely one of the most astounding intelligence on goals in living memory. The CIA structured its classification regime such that the most market value part of Vault 7, the CIA's weaponized malware, implants plus zero days, listening post LP, and command control C2 systems. The agency has little legal recourse. The CIA made these systems unclassified. Why the CIA chose to make a cyber arsenal unclassified reveals how concepts developed for military use do not easily cross over to the battlefield of cyber war. To attack its target, the CIA usually requires that its implants communicate with their control programs over the internet. If CIA implants, command and control, and listening post software were classified, then CIA officers could be prosecuted or dismissed for violating rules that prohibit placing classified information onto the internet. Consequently, the CIA has security made, secretly made most of its cyber spying or code unclassified. The US government is not able to assert copyright either due to restrictions in the US Constitution. This means that cyber arms manufacturers and computer hackers can freely pirate these weapons if they are obtained. The CIA has primarily had to rely, rely on obfuscation to protect its malware secrets. Conventional weapons such as missiles may be fired at the enemy, i.e. into an unsecured area. Proximity to or impact with the target detonates the ordinance including its classified parts. Hence, military personnel do not violate classification rules by firing ordinance within classified parts. Ordinance will likely explode. If it does not, that is not the operator's intent. Over the last decade, U.S. hacking operations have been increasingly dressed up in military jargon to tap into Department of Defense funding streams. For instance, attempted malware injections, commercial jargon, or implant drops, NSA jargon, are being called fires as if a weapon was being fired. However, the analogy is questionable. Unlike bullets, bombs, or missiles, most CIA malware is designed to live for days or even years after it has reached its target. CIA malware does not explode in impact, but rather permanently infests its target. In order to infect target's device, copies of the malware must be placed on the target's devices, giving physical possession of the malware to the target. To exf exfiltrate data back to the CIA or to await further instructions, the malware must communicate with CIA command and control C2 systems placed on internet connected servers, but such servers are typically not approved to hold classified information, so CIA command and control systems are also made unclassified. A successful attack on a target's computer system is more like a series of complex stock maneuvers in a hostile takeover bid or the careful planting of rumors in order to gain control over an organization's leadership rather than firing a weapons system. If there is a military analogy to be made, the infestation of a target is perhaps akin to the execution of a whole series of military maneuvers against the target's territory, including observation, infiltration, occupation, and exploitation. Evading forensic and antivirus. 
a series of standards that lay out CIA malware infestation patterns, which are likely to assist forensic crime scene investigations as well as Apple, Microsoft, Google, Samsung, Nokia, Blackberry, Siemens, and antivirus companies attribute and defend against attacks. Tradecraft do's and don'ts contain CIA rules on how its malware should be written to avoid fingerprints implicating the CIA, US government, or its winning partner companies in forensic review. Similar secret standards cover the use of encryption to hide CIA hacker and malware communication, describing target and exfiltrated data, as well as executing payload and persisting in the target's machines over time. CIA hackers develop successful attacks against most well-known antivirus programs. These are documented in AV defeats, personal security products, detecting and defeating PSPs and PSP debugger RE avoidance. For example, Komondo was defeated by CIA malware placing itself in the Windows recycle bin, while Komondo 6.x has a gapping hole of doom. CIA hackers discuss what the NSA's equation group hackers did wrong and how the CIA's malware makers could avoid similar exposure. Examples The CIA's engineering development group EDG management system contains around 500 different projects, only some of which are documented by year zero, each with their own sub-project, malware and hacker tools. The majority of these projects related to tools that are used for penetration, infestation, implanting, control and exfiltration. Another branch of development focuses on the development and cooperation of listening post LP and command and control C2 systems used to communicate with and control CIA implants. Special subject special projects are used to target specific hardware from router to smart TVs. Some example projects are described below. But see the table of contents for the full list of projects described by WikiLeaks Year Zero. Umbridge. The CIA's handcrafted hacking techniques pose a problem for the agency. Each technique it has created forms a fingerprint that can be used by forensic investigators to attribute multiple different attacks to the same entity. This is analogous to finding the same distinctive knife wound on multiple separate murder victims. The unique wounding style creates suspicion that a single murderer is responsible. As soon as one murder is set, in the set is solved, then the other murderers also find likely attribution. The CIA's remote devices branch Umbridge Group collects and maintains a substantial library of attack techniques stolen from malware produced in other states including the Russian Federation. With Umbridge and related projects, the CIA can not only increase its total number of attack types, but also misdirect attribution by leaving behind the fingerprints of the groups that the attack techniques were stolen from. Umbridge components cover keylogger, password collection, webcam capture, data destruction, persistence, privilege escalation, stealth, antivirus, PSP, avoidance, and survey techniques. Fine dining. Fine dining comes with a standardized questionnaire, i.e. menu, that CIA case officers fill out. The questionnaire is used by the agency's OSP, Operational Support Branch, to transform the requests of case officers into technique requirements for hacking act attacks, typically exfiltrating information from computer systems for specific operations. The questionnaire allows the OSP to identify how to adapt existing tools for the operation and communicate this to CIA malware of configuration staff. The OSP functions as the interface between CIA operational staff and the relevant technical support.
Lord's staff. Among the list of possible targets of the collection are Asset, Liaison Asset, System Administrator, Foreign Information Operations, Foreign Intelligence Agencies, and Foreign Government Entities. Notably absent is any reference to extremists or transnational criminals. The case officer is also asked to specify the environment of the target, like the type of computer, operating system used, internet connectivity, and installed antivirus utilities (PSPs), as well as a list of file types to be exfiltrated, like office documents, audio, video, images, or custom file types. The menu also asks for information if recurring access to the target is possible and how long unobserved access to the computer can be maintained. This information is used by the CIA's JQ to improvise software, see below, to configure a set of CIA malware suited to the specific needs of an operation. Improvise. GQ Improvise. Improvise is a tool set for configuration, post processing, payload, setup, and execution vector selection for survey exfiltration tools supporting all major operating systems like Windows, Bartender, Mac OS, Jukebox, and Linux TensorFlow. Its configuration utilities like Margarita allows the NOC Network Operations Center to customize tools based on requirements for fine dining questionnaires. Hive. Hive is a multi-platform CIA malware suit. It's associated control software. The project provides customizable implants for Windows, Solaris, Microtik, used in internet routers and Linux platforms, and a listening post LP command and control C2 infrastructure for communicate to communicate with these implants. The implants are configured to communicate via HTTPS with this web server of a covert cover domain. Each operation utilizing these implants has a separate cover domain, and the infrastructure can handle any number of cover domains. Each cover domain resolves to an IP address that is located at a commercial VPS virtual private server provider. The public facing the server forwards all incoming traffic via VPN to a bot server that handles actual connection connection requests from clients. It is set up for optional SSL client authentication. If a client sends a valid client certificate, only implants can do this. The connection is forwarded to the Honeycomb tool server that communicates with the implant. If a valid certificate is missing, which is the case of someone tr if someone tries to open the cover domain website by accident, the traffic is forwarded to cover server that delivers an unsuspicious looking website. The Honeycomb tool server receives exfiltrated information from the implant. An operator can also task the implant to execute jobs on the target computer, so the tool server acts as a C2 command and control server for the implant. Similar functionality, though limited to Windows, is provided by the Rick Bobby project. See the classified user developer guide for Hive. Frequently asked questions. Why now? WikiLeaks published as soon as its verification analysis were ready. In February, the Trump administration has issued an executive order calling for a cyber war review to be prepared within 30 days. While the review increases the timelines and relevance of the publication, it did not play a role in setting the publication date. Redactions Names, email addresses, and external IP addresses have been redacted in the releases. 70,875 redactions in total until further analysis is complete. Number 1. Over-redaction some items may have been redacted that are not employees, contractors, targets, 
records or otherwise related to the agency, but are, for example, authors of documents for, for otherwise public projects that are used by the agency. 2. Identity versus person. The redacted names are replaced by user IDs, numbers, to allow readers to assign multiple pages to a single author. Given, re given the redaction process used, a single person may be re represented by more than one assigned identifier, but no identifier refers to more than one real person. 3. Archive attachments, zip, tar.gz, etc are placed with a PDF listing all the file names in the archive. As the archive content is assessed, it may be made available. Until then, the archive, archive is redacted. 4. Attachments with only binary content are placed by a hex dump of the content to prevent accidental invocation of binaries that may have been infected with Babanai CIA malware. As the content is assessed, it may be made available until then the content is redacted. 5. The tens of thousands of routable IP addresses references, including more than 22,000 within the United States, that correspond to possible targets, CIA covert listening post servers, intermediary and test systems, are redacted for further exclusive investigation. 6. Binary files of non-public origin are only available as dumps to prevent accidental invocation of CIA malware-infected binaries. Organizational chart. The organizational chart corresponds to the material published by WikiLeaks so far. Since the organizational structure of the CIA below the level of directorates is not public, the placement of the EDG and its branches within the org, org chart of the agency is re reconstructed from information contained in the documents released so far. It is intended to be used as a rough outline of the internal organization. Please be aware that the reconstructed org chart is incomplete and the internal reorganizations occur frequently. WikiLeaks pages. Year Zero contains 7,818 web pages with 943 attachments for the internal development groupware. The software used for this purpose is called Confluence, a proprietary, proprietary software from At Atlassian. Web pages in this system, like in Wikipedia, have a version history that can provide interesting insights on how documents evolved over time. The 7,818 documents include these page histories for 1,136 latest versions. The order of name pages within each level is determined by date, oldest first. Page content is not present if it is, if it was originally dynamically created by the Confluence software, as indicated in the reconstructed page. What time period is covered? The years 2013 to 2016, the sort, or the sort order of the pages within each level is determined by date, oldest first. WikiLeaks has obtained the CIA's creation last modification date for each page, but these do not yet appear, appear for technical reasons. Usually the data can be dis discerned or approximated from the content of the page order. If it is critical to know the exact time date, contact WikiLeaks. What is Vault 7? Vault 7 is a substantial collection of material about CIA activities obtained by WikiLeaks. When was each part of Vault 7 obtained? Part 1 was obtained recently and covers through 2016. Details on the other parts will be available at the time of publication. Is each part of Vault 7 from a different source? Details on the other parts will be available at the time of publication. What is the total size of Alt 7? The series is the largest intelligence publication in history. How did WikiLeaks obtain each part of Alt 7? 
sources trust WikiLeaks to not reveal information that might help identify them. Isn't WikiLeaks worried that the CIA will act against its staff to stop the series? No, that would be certainly counterproductive. Has WikiLeaks already mined all the best stories? No, WikiLeaks has intentionally not written up hundreds of, it, of impactful stories to encourage others to find them and so create expertise in the area to subsequent parts in the series. There, there, look, those who demonstrate journalistic excellence may be considered for early access to future parts. Won't other journalists find all the best stories before me? Unlikely. There are very considerably more stories than there are journalists or academics who are in positions to write them.